food prices, if you've noticed this, I don't have to tell you, they've steadily risen since 2020. And according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, both food at home and restaurant purchases increased 2.2% between March of 2023 and 2024. The good news is there are ways to save food and money. This morning, food scientist Ali Manning is joining us with the strategies to get more bang for our buck. I get excited every time. I'm like, she's here, she's here. Thank you. Okay. So glad to be here. Yes, okay, so talk to me about maximizing our time and saving some money while grocery shopping. You know, it's important to prepare. I know we don't like to eat before we go grocery shopping, but that's one of the first things we should do so that we stay on budget. The next thing to do is prepare that budget. Maybe even <laughs> do inventory with your children at the house before you head out to the store. That gives them an opportunity to be engaged with the process instead of standing in the fridge like, Mom, I don't have anything to eat. But there are some solutions. So when you go into the grocery store, have your budget ready, have your calculator ready if, that, if you're that person. Coupons, for example, and shop strategically. And so I encourage people to do that, especially when it's around the issue of food waste because we waste so much food. Restaurants are only second to households in the amount of food waste. Oh my god. So that's why we have created the 901 Save the Food Challenge. So for example, if you're not into cooking but you want to support locally sustainable restaurants, Project Green Fork has initiated this ish this call called the 901 Save the Food Challenge. And so how exactly does that work? And are there very specific restaurants that are involved? Yeah, so last year we issued this call and it was around August and we approached restaurants in Crosstown Evergreen about this process um, around this issue of food waste. And so we came in with some strategies and some resources, some help to encourage restaurants to curb their food waste. Right, right, that's yeah. beautiful. Okay, yeah. and so I know that uh, Project Green Fork kind of keeps a tally on, on right. who's doing this. That's right. Right, so. You know, since last year, 20 restaurants in five different neighborhoods have joined this challenge and we're moving into Cooper Young this May. Oh my goodness, yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, talk about what you have here. Yeah. So, yeah, so much excitement. <laughs> so we have sustainability kits. Mm -hmm. um, we give them away at our events. We actually have an event called Loving Local on June 9th. And they contain so much information for how to recycle. Mm. Yes, we recycle in Memphis. We do. I do. I, I was actually a founding um, recycle person that the city and um, uh, contacted and it's like people one thing that I don't think people know is like you don't put the plastic bags in that's right yeah it was very fascinating yeah so so information and resources that dispel any of the myths give you some step-by-step -step instructions for what to recycle how to safely donate we actually have a food re rescue coordinator Steph Rollin who helps us fa facilitate those donations with our rescue partners and since last year developing or working with this app called carrot we've we've diverted 8,000 pounds or we've rescued 8,000 pounds from our food donation partners. This is just yeah. a complete and total change of our mindset mm -hmm. that we just, uh, because I mean, and then I always point out the fact that we live on the river, right? That's so we right. want to protect our natural resources mm -hmm. and recycle. Absolutely. Tell us about this event, uh, the specifics oh, yeah. of what's coming up. So excited about Loving Local. Yeah. This is our annual summer event. It's happening June 9th at Grind City Brewery. And we are featuring and highlighting our Project Green Fork chefs, food trucks, and sustainable vendors. So we'll have some folks who upcycle. We'll have some people who create interesting art using uh, wood, for example. And so it's an opportunity for us to socialize green dining and bring this concept of zero waste events to the forefront. Okay, I feel like, like you are you are a scientist. Yeah. So when you said upcycle, I literally was like, what? Yes. you know, because it's like Mandarin to me. What what is upcycling? You know, wow. There, there, we've been doing it for ages, right? And so, but there's this new term um, that we've adapted, and essentially, it's utilizing what you have and creating something new. Getting creative. MacGyver. <laughs> it's just MacGyvering your stuff. Right, That's okay. Right, because there's so many ways, alternative ways to repurpose ingredients, even lemon peels instead of throwing them, throwing them away. What, so we have all the solutions. So like you would take, I, I mean, I know about taking the lemon peels and putting them in the um, food you disposal, but what, what you're talking about like- Cleaners, for example, mm -hmm. you can put it in a bottle with some vinegar and a little bit of water and dilute it and use it as a cleaner. Or you can 
add it to your cocktail, like a dried lemon peel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a simple way to use those ingredients. That so is so... We have all the tools to do that. I love this so much. Thank you so much. We're going to have to go on out. I see, you know, the Save the Food Challenge, of course, partnering with the local restaurants, uh, food waste assessment, yeah. restaurants, and also those detailed reports and photographs that That's you're putting right. together. Amazing. Thank you so much. And we're going to have to check out your event, yes. Loving Local. Join us there. All right. Thank you. Allie Manning, food scientist. <laughs> The Bluff City offers no shortage of things